Mr. President, on the 21st in New Delhi, you commended CII and the National Endowment of Democracy for our initiative on democratic governance. The next day, on the 22nd, you commended CII and the U.S. Energy Association for our initiative on energy and environment. Today, Mr. President, you had a round of some of our high-tech technology show windows. Your visit to India, Mr. President, is, a, is, a, is hallmark for promoting partnership between our two great countries. But after your visit, it is up to the Indian people, to the American people and the businessmen and industrialists from both the countries to follow through and follow through strongly. And I, on behalf of Indian industry, Mr. President, and on behalf of CII, commit that we shall follow up. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I now present you Sri Chandra Babu Naidu, the Chief Minister of Andhra Pradesh. Your Excellency, President of the United States of America, Mr. William Jefferson Clinton, distinguished invitees, friends, Mr. Rahul Bajaj, CIA President, Sanjay Bhatnagar, President, American Chamber of Commerce, Ramalinga Raju, another entrepreneur in Andhra Pradesh, and friends, media. A warm welcome to President William Jefferson Clinton to Hyderabad, sorry, Cyberabad. This is known as Cyberabad as on today. We had twin cities, Hyderabad and Sikindrabad. Recently, we added Cyberabad. Now, we are all in Cyberabad. This is the history of Hyderabad. We are very happy to receive you. This is a memorable day. I am very happy that American president is visiting South India. You know, Mr. President, you are in a southerner. You have come from southern part of America. First time American president is visiting <laughs> South India. We are all honored. We are very happy to receive you. Mr. President, you have done so, much, so many things for U.S. economy and also USA. The new economy, what you have created in a unique way. In 1992, there is a deficient budget that is 292 billion U.S. dollars. Now you have made a surplus budget that is 123 billion U.S. dollars. Now growth rate is, for the last seven years, 4%. Now it is 6% in the last month. It is only possible for you to create this much of growth rate, whereas in a developed country. Even unemployment level, 7.5% in 1992, you are reduced to 4.2%. This is also a unique thing. You have created nearly 19 million new jobs for the last 40 years. Nobody has done in the in United States of America. First time you have created so many jobs and you have created all these things. Even on crime rate is the lowest for a generation. All figures are lowest in America. That is how you have done major initiatives in education, healthcare, environment. We are all very happy. You have done so many things for America and you have prepared the American society to move, next, uh, to move into the 21st century. This is your contribution for the America. So, uh, Mr. President, India's links with the US, largest democracies in the world, India second, India, second largest English-speaking country in the world, historical struggle against colonialism. There is excellent relations between America and 
India in trade and also investment. Even recently, you have expressed that one third of American computer professionals are from India. One third engineers in Silicon Valley also <laughs> hails from India. I am proud to say 23% of India's software engineers are from Andhra Pradesh, from this state. That is our happy and also we are proud of it. The U.S. connection for Andhra Pradesh, U.S. companies like Microsoft, Oracle, Motorola, Hubbard, DuPont, Mer Merck, Pfizer, etc. are located here. Indo-American Center for International St Studies are located in Hyderabad in Usman University. Mr. President, we are very happy to know that your golf shirts are made in Hyderabad. <laughs> that is a very proud moment for us. Cutter and Buck, this is the company which is supplying for you all your uh, golf shirts. We are very happy morning also to remember us. I have given one golf shirt made in Hyderabad. <laughs> Sir, I am really touched. When I requested to visit Hyderabad, you have responded very well. Letter of 3rd December 1993, I would appreciate the chance to see for myself Hyderabad's unique synthesis of India's ancient cultural traditions and leading edge technologies. This is what you promised me. You made it reality by coming to Hyderabad. We are all very happy and we are thankful to you. Sir, in, Mr. President, in America, within seven years' time, you have done so many things. Here also we want to eradicate poverty. For the last four and a half years, we are working in the direction to eradicate poverty. We have prepared Vision 2020. In vision document, we made it very clear. This is the philosophy of vision. Our vision of Andhra Pradesh is a state where poverty is totally eradicated, a knowledge and learning society built on the values of hard work, honesty, discipline, and a collective sense of purpose. This is the philosophy we are working for our state. Even we are having very ambitious plans if you see the physical and financial targets for Vision 2020, seven-fold increase in per capita income, at least 17 to, million, 70 to 20 million new jobs, 0.83% annual population increase, rapid growth in industry and services. This document is prepared by McKinsey, the international company. The McKinsey is headed by, again, a Indian. That is our uh, pride. He has prepared all these things. We are very happy. Mr. President, you know our Indian constitution. We are having federal government, state government, and local self-government. We have taken a new approach, empowering everyone, everywhere, through self-help groups. Just now, we have seen DACRA. Even now, they are using internet for e-commerce and also self-employment schemes and also how they are interacting for microcredit, all these things. We have created self-help groups, even for farmers, watershed development, water user association, for managing water efficiently. And also for youth empowerment, we have created CMEY. To upgrade the environment, we have created joint forest management. To achieve 100% literacy, we have created village education committee. Through all these self-help groups, we wanted to involve stakeholders. We wanted to achieve progress. And at the same time, we, have, we had a program called as Janma Bhumi. Through Janma Bhumi, it is a motherland concept. Through Janma Bhumi, we wanted to achieve overall excellence by involving everybody in the Janma Bhumi program. Now we are asking every citizen, they should not question what government is doing. We are asking community what you are doing for the society. That is how we are promoting patriotic feeling among our citizens. And also, you are aware, clean and green. We have to give clean and green atmosphere for future generation. Every month, third Saturday, all students, employees, citizens of the state, 
we are all following clean and green program and we are promoting cleanliness hygienic conditions this is one area total all over the world people are worried so we wanted to promote environment for that we are celebrating clean and green function every month green business center you have seen just now the cii chamber of indian industry they have started that they have started in hyderabad i wanted to express here cii they are doing extremely good service in hyderabad for andhra pradesh by having partnership with us we are really thanking them in our presence mr president you know information technology for all you are the leader you are using information technology internet to promote everything i mean in it mean idea transfers to the common man that means any idea good idea all over the world has to be has to be transferred to the common man then only we will get results that's why we call it idea transfer that is what we call for id it mr president you know linear models of development have gone you have given a new way that is third way no capitalism no communism this is a third way where reforms with human face you and mr tony blair they are promoting third way in the same way we are working for the last four years we are getting excellent results you have seen just now high speed digital networks internet access for the 29000 villages we want to take it up immediately work is going on from anywhere in the state we want to have access anywhere in the country anywhere in the world that is how we are working knowledge revolution to eradicate poverty of the mind this is what we are seeing we are thinking only knowledge revolution to eradicate poverty once everybody is having confident then things will happen automatically here i want to say one thing two bills in the world they have created history of course is here bill clinton we are very happy within 7 years time he has done historical work in united states on public governance on democratic country for a century nobody has done this much of work he has done another bill bill gates whereas he has done extremely good work on information technology this is the revolutionary things they have done mr president you know very well bill gates within 30 years time he has become world richest man here wipro md one mr prem ji is here he is third richest man in the world he is also in the it field and also ramalinga raju sanad isail is here he has done extremely good work in andhra like there so many people created histories on it my idea is what you have done in america we wanted to use it for helping the common man we wanted to eradicate poverty to eradicate poverty we wanted to use it as a strategic tool for that uh, for that activity that is where we are working these are all the schools of excellence indian school of business this is where we are working now this is this is uh, promoted by 500 fortune companies in the world now we are having collaboration with porton and also kellogg indian institute of information technology is another institute where we are having collaboration with carnegie mellon university we are promoting all these things like this at fx level we are having so many institutions of excellence even other side if you see so many engineering colleges and also bca courses all these things we have promoted for the period of 4 years time this is another area skilled man for added every year graduate engineers mca mba diploma engineers iti certificate holders every year we are adding all these things scenario in the 21st century the passage of isms are over world has become a borderless world geography as history death of distance now that's why we are reinventing government smart government simple moral accountable responsive transparent this is our idea to promote government smart government 
We wanted to bridge the digital divide. That is where we are working. Future is technology-led development, biotechnology. Apart from information technology, we are very strong in biotechnology. Bharat Biotech, Santa Biotech, they are located in Hyderabad. And also information technology, IT powering the global economy, IT enabled services are the future. This is where, for a brave new world, partnership in the gray revolution. Our ancestors used to work with physics. Today, brain has to work. Then only we'll do wonders. That's why here, we need partnership from you to achieve the gray revolution. As on today, Mr. President, there is a brain drain from India, US. Now we are expecting brain gain from USA to India. That is what we are thinking. <laughs> now you see, globally, everyone wants peace, prosperity, happiness. This is a famous quotation from Peter Decker. If you want to understand the future, you have to create it. So it is in our hands, our politicians, policymakers, has to work in the direction. Sir, here I want to give one thought to you. As on today, you have done extremely well for the United States of America. You are no more an American citizen now. You are a global citizen. Now I'm requesting you to promote globally to do so many things for the world. That is what we are expecting. You are always promoting good governance, democratic governance, and also all these things. For that, we wanted to create one institute, Global Institute of Governance in the Information Age. If you give good governance, all things will follow. That's why we wanted to create this. For this, I want to show one film that is three minutes. That is what we wanted to explain to you, sir. Here, sir, I wanted to show that. And at the same time, we wanted to seek your cooperation in this direction. The borderless world is here. We want to welcome the borderless world, where the internet is connecting people across the globe like never before. This virtual world poses a world of challenges for democratic governance. It places added responsibility on the leaders. It also forces us to acquire greater insights into governance, which helps improve quality in all facets of life. It is a world in transition. At the forefront of this digital world are the world's oldest democracy and the world's largest democracy, the United States of America and India, both committed to creating a whole new world order, both pledged to creating new models of governance across the world. Two nations that believe the wealth and benefits of the digital era should reach the masses. Together, we can strive to create a virtual bridge for the virtual world. One that empowers the common people. The Global Institute of Governance in the Information Age. GIGA, a world-class institute conceptualized to marry good public policy with emerging technologies. GIGA will create, disseminate, and apply knowledge pertaining to governance in the Information Age. It shall search for creative ways of ensuring the benefits of the Internet era, find expression in fields of health, education, commerce, and other areas of social relevance. GIGA will facilitate in bridging the digital divide between the developed world and the developing world. It will get the best scientists, engineers, philosophers, intellectuals, and more importantly, practitioners of governance, who will debate, teach, share, and pursue the birth of a new world order. GIGA is in commemoration of this historic visit, a celebration of Indo-US partnership. GIGA is a non-profit autonomous institute located at Hyderabad, Andhra Pradesh, India. 
it is an idea which has recognized that the borderless world is here. Thank you, sir. This is our idea. Mr. President, you have used information technology and electronic media to motivate your people. Same way even developing countries will do wonders by adopting information technology and also electronic media, we'll have a leapfrog development. This is where we are working. Finally, this is our famous quotation, dare to dream, strive to achieve. For this, we need your, we need your cooperation. Thank you. Thank you, one and all. Now, I request Ramalinga Raju, a success entrepreneur, to address. I feel like a dwarf alongside two giants. However, riding on the wave of information technology, I hope to marginally make up for the differences. Mr. Chandrababu Naidu is well known as, a, as the CEO of Andhra Pradesh and has excelled in the art of the possible. Mr. William Jefferson Clinton, President of the United States, a great leader of a great nation, representing a new world order and a new hope for peoples and nations globally. Looking at President Clinton's short visit to India, the words that spring to my mind or he came, he saw, he conquered. <laughs> President Clinton has conquered the hearts of a billion people of India. There are two nations which are closest to my heart, India, where I was born, and the United States, where I was reborn. India, a great civilization, has its foundations in its several thousand years old Vedic culture. The quest for knowledge and truth for existential and metaphysical reasons is evidenced by every word and every phrase in our Vedic texts. The passion with which our ancient rishis sought knowledge and can only, that can be matched only by the best scientists in the modern age. I pursued my education in the US at Ohio University, Ohio, the state of Ambassador Celeste. This country taught me true meaning of individual freedom and imbibed in me a great spirit of pursuit of excellence. I believe that the US has performed this magic not only on me, but also 1.5 million people of Indian origin residing in that country. Our, com our company, Satyam, literally means truth. We chose the name for its profound meaning and as a part of great tradition of respecting elders for my father, from my father's name. Satyam started its operations in IT services 11 years ago. Being one of the pioneers in software development, it has grown to a size of 6,000 people in this short span of time. Over 8,000 people and over 70% of its revenues come from the US our business is inextricably linked with the United States. We are operating in 35 countries, working for more than 300 corporations, offering a wide range of services, including electronic commerce, enterprise solutions. Satyam also offers internet services through its subsidiary in 35 cities in India, and is one of the two companies to be listed on the NASDAQ. The company 
has a com combined market capitalization of $13 billion. We are proud to be one of the 12 SEI CMM level five companies for quality in the world and to be in joint venture with General Electric. Mr. President, the growth that we have witnessed in Satyam is representative of the excitement that hundreds of companies in India are experiencing. Companies like TCS, Wipro, Infosys, and NIIT in this country have proven that their quality of services is second to none. This is further reinforced by the fact that our counterparts in the US, several other, several of them represented here today, have done even better. The whole country is galvanized and mesmerized by the internet. Internet is seen not only as a provider of information and content, but also as a backbone on which any service can ride, whether it is legal, accounting, R&D, engineering, or call center related service. When the world GDP touches $50 trillion in the next 20 years, a substantial portion of the same belonging to services, at least a $2 trillion opportunity awaits India. This is too important an opportunity for collaboration that neither India nor United States can afford to underestimate. Mr. President, I had a classmate in the United States by name Ashok Trivedi, who is now a US citizen. He has co-founded one of the most successful companies in the United States, namely Mastec. It has started its operations at about the same time that we have started Satyam and now has approximately the same number of people. As Satyam started opening many development centers in the US in the recent years, Mastec started opening, opening several development centers in India. The East started moving westward, and the West started moving eastward. Today, the difference between the East and the West is truly blurred. Thank you. May I now request the President of the United States, Mr. William Jefferson Clinton, to speak. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you very much. Please don't go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. First of all, thank you all for coming out in such large numbers on this warm day to this wonderful facility. It may be that every day is a warm day, but for us it's a new experience, <laughs> and I rather like it. Mr. Raju, thank you very much. Uh, President Bajaj, President Butnagar, Mr. Hari Haran, and uh, Chief Minister Naidu, thank you all. Uh, for welcoming us here. And uh, I must say, when I was watching the Chief Minister give his speech, I wish I'd brought some slides, <laughs> uh, because it was so very uh, impressive. And uh, you should know that he is becoming, yes, he did a good job, yes? If a picture is worth a thousand words, you will remember much more of what he said than what I am about to say. <laughs> and uh, he is becoming very well known in the United States and very much admired for all of these remarkable achievements, and I thank you. I would like to thank uh, your ambassador to the United States, Ambassador Chandra, for coming back home to India and making this trip with me, and thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador, for what you do. I, um, I would like to thank the large number of Americans who are here with me, including uh, 
six members of our Congress, uh, and I'd like to ask them to stand because they, they come on these trips with me. I get to give the speeches. They have to sit and listen. And then when we go home, they have all the power over the money. <laughs> so uh, I would like to introduce uh, Representative Gary Ackerman from New York, Representative Nita Loy from New York, Representative Jim McDermott from Washington, Representative Ed Royce from California, Representative Sheila Jackson Lee from Texas, and Representative Jan Tchaikovsky from Chicago, Illinois. Thank you very much. That doesn't improve the aid program for India. I don't know what will. <laughs> and make sure we have no burdens on e-commerce between ourselves. I want to thank Secretary Daly, the Secretary of Commerce, for being here, and Brady Anderson, the administrator of our USAID program, and Dr. Neil Lane, my science advisor, and Dr. Ramamurthy, and uh, of course, Ambassador Dick Celeste, and Jacqueline, his wife. I'd also like to point out I have, I don't know how many, but I have at least four Indian Americans with me working on this trip who are actually in the audience today, and two of them are from here in Hyderabad. So I'd like to acknowledge Rekha Chalashani from AID and Mona Mohib, who works with us in the White House. I thank them uh, for being here. You should also know this was a very coveted trip from uh, Washington to India. My chief of staff is on this trip, my national security advisor. Uh, everyone wanted to come. Those who did are happy. Those who are still at home working are angry. Uh, but we know, we know a lot of our future depends upon whether we have the right kind of partnership with India. Once a historian said of your nation, India is the world's most ancient civilization, yet one of its youngest nations. Today, in this ancient city, we see leadership to drive the world's newest economy. One of the greatest joys of being President of the United States for me has been to be involved with the people at home who are pushing the frontiers of science and technology. Uh, many people believe that I asked Al Gore to be my vice president because he knew roughly 5,000 times more about computer technology than I did. <laughs> but I have learned every day now for over seven years. And I think it's very interesting for a man my age, I'm 53, which is way too old to make any money in information technology, uh, but it's very interesting. The terms that are used today by young people, and not so young people anymore, had such different meanings for me when I was in my 20s. When I was a, a young man, chips were something you ate. <laughs> Windows were something you washed. <laughs> Discs were part of your spinal column that, when you got older, often slipped out of place. And semiconductors were frustrated musicians who wish they were leading orchestras. Uh, the world is a very different place today. I want to speak briefly about how our nations already are working together to seize the possibilities of the information age and about what we can do to make sure no one is left behind. I particularly appreciated the Chief Minister's emphasis on this in his remarks. Because for me, the true test of the information revolution is not just the size of the feast it creates, but the number of people who can sit at the table to enjoy it. It is incredible to think about how far science has come in just the seven years and a few months since I first became president. In that time, we have explored a galaxy 12 billion light years away. We have seen the cloning of animals. We are just a few months away from completing the sequencing of the human genome. 
with all that promises for improving the life and the quality of life of people all around the world. When I was elected president, there were, listen to this, there were only 50 sites on the World Wide Web in January of 1993. Today, there are more than 50 million. And it is the fastest growing communications medium in history. Here in India, the number of internet users is expected to grow more than 10 times in just four years. 10 years ago, India's high-tech industries generated software and computer-related services worth $150 million. Last year, that number was four billion dollars. Today, this industry employs more than 280,000 Indians in jobs that pay almost double the national average. Little wonder, as the minister said, Hyderabad is being known now as Cyberabad. Now, I realize to many of you this comes as no surprise since the decimal system was discovered, invented in India. If it weren't for India's contributions in math and science, you could argue that computers, satellites, and silicon chips would never have been possible in the first place. So you ought to have a leading role in the 21st century economy. Companies with names like Infosys, Wipro, and of course Satyam, Again, I want to say that I think Chief Minister Nagu deserves a lot of credit for giving you the right kind of governance. There are some people who believe, we were talking about this before we came out here, there are some people who believe that the 21st century world, because the internet will make the globe more interconnected and we will have all kinds of, of connections with people beyond our borders that we never had before, and therefore, government will become completely irrelevant to most people's lives. If you look at the example of this state and this city, you see we need a different kind of government. It can be smaller. It can be far less bureaucratic. It should be far more market-oriented. It should be smart, as I learned from <laughs> the minister's chart. But it is a grave mistake to think that we can really go forward together without that kind of smart governance. And the Chief Minister's role in your success, I think, is evident to all of you by your response. I'm personally intrigued by the fact that you can get a driver's license on the Internet and you don't have to go wait in line as you do in America. I have my driver's license here. <laughs> and in a few months, I may come back because it may be the only place I will have a license to drive. So <laughs> I will be just tooling around on the streets here, <laughs> causing traffic jams. <laughs> I want to also acknowledge, if I might, just very briefly, something which uh, has already been mentioned by previous speakers. And that is the remarkable success of Indian Americans in this new economy. From Suhas Patil, 750 companies in Silicon Valley alone, in one place in America. Now, as again I learned on the screen, we're moving from brain drain to brain gain in India because many are coming home. A partnership of Americans and Indians proposes to raise a billion dollars for a global institute of science and technology here. I have no doubt they will succeed. After welcoming your engineers to our shores, today many of our leading companies from Apple to Texas Instruments to Oracle are coming in waves to your shores. I'm told that if a person calls Microsoft for help with software, there's a pretty good chance they'll find themselves talking to an expert in India rather than Seattle. India is fast becoming one of the world's software superpowers, proving that in a globalized world, developing nations not only can succeed, developing nations can lead. One of the reasons India is finding so much success 
I believe, is because of your enduring values of nationhood. Fifty years ago, Prime Minister Nehru had the vision to invest in the Indian Institutes of Technology. I am very proud that the United States helped in its early development. Today, not only are ITT graduates leading the information revolution, India has the second largest pool of trained scientists in the entire world. As I said, we have to do more together. Two of our leading associations, the U.S.-India Business Council and your Federation of Indian Chamber of Commerce and Industry, will launch a dialogue to take our infotech trade to new heights, to create more jobs and more opportunities in both our nations. But as I said at the beginning, in the midst of all this celebration of tomorrow, and in the midst of all of our satisfaction at our own good fortune, there is something we cannot forget. It's a good thing that we're creating a lot of 25 millionaires. It's a good thing that we're seeing the latest Indian startups shoot up the NASDAQ. But this whole enterprise cannot just be about higher profits. There must also be a higher purpose. In India today, as in America, there is much to do. Millions of Indians are connected to the internet, but millions more aren't yet connected to fresh water. India accounts for 30% of the world's software engineers, but 25% of the world's malnourished. And there are other statistics which, given the wealth of the United States, I could cite you about our country, which are just as troubling and challenging. So our challenge is to turn the newest discoveries into the best weapons humanity has ever had to fight poverty. In all the years of recorded human history, we have never had this many opportunities to fight poverty, and it is good economics to do so. There is so much we can do, for example, to help the poor have better health care. This morning, I was at a clinic in Mahavir, and I helped to immunize a child against polio. Together, we have nearly eradicated this disease. But tuberculosis is still a major problem. Malaria is on the rise. HIV and AIDS are big problems for you, as they have been for years for the United States. These are global problems. We must find the science to solve them and the technology to disseminate those solutions to all people without regard to their income. There is much to do to protect our planet and those who share it with us. In Agra, I saw some efforts that local citizens are making to clean the air and preserve the Taj Mahal. I talked to an engineer who is doing his best to clean up the Ganges River that he worships as an important part of his faith and his country's history. Yesterday, I was in the National Park in Rajasthan to see the magnificent tigers. And I learned much to my dismay that from a man who has spent a great deal of his life and risked a lot of his life to save those tigers, that last year, still, 20 of them were poached. And you are still in danger of losing them. They, too, are an important part of your heritage and your future. We must find a way to help people make enough money and have a decent enough income that they wish to preserve the environment and the biological species with which we share this planet. This is very, very important. And technology has a big role to play in all of this. This week, you are establishing a green business center here in Hyderabad with some assistance from USAID to bring the private sector and local government together to promote clean energy development and environmental technology. This is a profoundly important issue. And I hope that this city will lead your nation and help to lead the world toward a serious reassessment of our common obligation to reverse the tide of global warming and climate change. Because in the new economy, you do not have to pollute the atmosphere and warm the planet to grow the economy. 
In the new economy, you can create more jobs by promoting energy efficiency and alternative sources of energy than by polluting the environment. The economic wave of the future is in environmental preservation, not in environmental destruction. That is a lesson this city can teach the rest of your nation, people in my nation, and people throughout the world, and I hope you will do it. There is still much we can do in science and technology to feed the world's people. American and Indian scientists are working in the biotechnology industry to pioneer new crops more resistant to pests, diseases, more nutritious, with higher yields per acre. There is much we can do to protect, protect the rich cultural diversity of our planet. I know that some worry that globalization will produce a world where the unique gifts nations and peoples bring to the world are washed away. I do not believe that. If we do the right things, the internet can have precisely the opposite effect. Look at India with 17 officially recognized languages and some 22,000 dialects. You can get on the internet today and find dozens of sites that bring together people who speak Telugu from every part of the world. You can download fonts in Gujarati, Marathi, Assamese, and Bengali. You can order handicrafts made by people from every part of India. I saw one of the sites just before coming in here. And you know the proceeds are going to the people in need. The new technology can reinforce our cultural distinctions while reaffirming the even more important fact of our common humanity. And India can also help us lead the way in doing that. Now, finally, let me say, we cannot work to lift what has been called the Silk Curtain, which has divided the United States and India for too long now, only to have a digital divide arise in both our countries between the haves and have-nots. In America, we've worked very hard to wire all our schools to the internet, and we've made great progress. We are now going to provide some $5 million through AID to help bring the internet to schools and businesses in underserved areas in rural India. This state is doing a remarkable job in providing the internet to people all over the state in the smallest, poorest villages. We have to bring government services with printers to every village so people can see in basic ways what it is they need to do to improve the health care of their children. We need printers with computers on the internet with all the educational software available. If we could do that for every village in South Asia, in Africa, in Latin America, in the Middle East, then overnight the poorest places in the world could have access to the same learning materials that only the richest schools offer their students today. We can do that if we do it together. And it isn't just good public values. It would be good economics. It would mean, among other things, that the world's most populous nations would have the world's largest number of educated people and therefore in no time would have the world's largest economy. Doing the right thing is good economics in the information age. And we have to do this together. Finally, let me say that we just want to be a good partner with you in all these endeavors. Two days ago in Delhi, I signed an agreement to create a U.S. Indo Science and Technology Forum to bring scientists from our nations together to discuss future cooperation. Today, the top science minds in our two governments are sitting down together to begin a dialogue on how we can conduct new research across a whole range of scientific frontiers. There is a lot we can do. But you know, as I said, before I came out here, I visited a lot of the booths. I met a lot of the business people. And I also was treated by the chief minister to a video conference with people in all 23 districts of this state who were working on empowerment projects, who had access to microcredit, 
I learned something I didn't know before I got here, which is that 20 percent of the people in the world in poor villages who have access to microcredit are in this state, in India. And that's something my wife and I and our administration have worked very hard on. We finance through AID about 2 million microcredit loans all across the world every year. So I saw all this. And I would say there's one thing that I hope my country will learn from the values expressed in the chief minister's speech, in the local government councils I have visited here, in the local women's communes I have visited here working on all kinds of economic and educational issues. And that is that the two most important things that we can promote in the new world are empowerment of individuals and a sense of community. And if you do one without the other, you will not succeed. Very often, people who are very interested in empowerment don't have much interest in community. When they're talking about empowerment, they mean their own empowerment. <laughs> and very often, a lot of people who have always cared deeply about community are almost a little suspicious of empowerment. But the lesson you are teaching us is that we must do both together. We're here to talk about the future of cyberspace. Cyber comes from the Greek word kybernautis. It means helmsman, one who steers the ship. So I am here to say I admire what you are doing to steer the ship of this state into the future. I want to steer with you, but we cannot but we cannot forget the simple message that no matter how much new technology there is, the two things we must remain committed to are empowerment and community. Everyone counts. Everyone should have a chance. Everyone has a role to play. And we all do better when we help each other. Thank you, and God bless you. It's my uh, pleasant duty to uh, say a very brief uh, word of thanks to uh, uh, the President, all the guests, uh, the Chief Minister. Um, I'd like to recount an incident in 1992 when I was at uh, St. Louis during a summer, uh, when at about midnight, the President, which, who was then a presidential candidate at that point of time, walked in, and I remember a very um, warm, gracious person, very energetic, who had the patience to meet and greet everybody who was there at that hotel. When I met him a few days ago, I found the same warmth, the same energy flowing uh, through the president. And I really would like to say thank you on behalf of everybody who's over here. Thank you for coming to India. Thank you for coming to Cyberabad. And thank you for inspiring us.